Hello, I'm William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and uh, for some time I've, I've been asked about video lessons for uh, most of the core courses in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and I haven't been avoiding the work of, of teaching through the core courses of, of the Classical Liberal Arts curriculum, but I've been working uh, to prepare texts that would allow us to do that. And so I didn't want to teach uh, from old books that were difficult to read or clumsy to use. I wanted to establish fresh new texts, copies of the works that need to be studied. So we'd have some nice texts to work with and, and the studies would, would be aesthetically pleasing. So we've been working on getting all the texts prepared, and that's taken us uh, quite a bit of time. It's, it's pretty difficult work. But I'm happy to say that as of this week, and today is October 22nd, uh, 2024, as of this week, we've got all of Aristotle's Organon and Aristotle's Rhetoric. So that's all of Aristotle's works on reasoning and rhetoric uh, prepared in new texts, and uh, so that, that obstacle is now out of the way, and I'm going to begin teaching through all of Aristotle's organon and rhetoric for students in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. I'll, I'll, of course, I'll share videos on YouTube, uh, but I, I want those of you who access the content on YouTube to understand that um, the videos that I'll be making for these lessons, while they'll appear on YouTube and They'll be disorganized, and they'll have ads and things like that on them. Uh, they're available for students in the academy who are enrolled in the academy without any of that stuff. They're, they're hosted privately. There's no ads or anything like that. So if you find all of that stuff annoying, and if you spend you know a good amount of time watching these videos, you might just want to get into the academy and study with us rather than uh, using things on YouTube. But that's up to you. I I'm going to make them available on YouTube because it's good It's good uh, for us to promote the study of the classical liberal arts and, and to attract students to join us in the academy. Um, and, and personally, I enjoy connecting with people who are just learning about the classical Catholic curriculum and things like that. So it's been, it's been rewarding for me as well. But I'm, I'm going to begin... Uh, teaching through all of Aristotle's works on reasoning and then through his art of rhetoric. Quite a, a great project for me to work on. It will probably take me a couple of years to get through it, but um, the time is, is finally uh, you know, available for us to do that now that all the texts are complete. I'd like to just share with you uh, where you can find these texts. If you go to the Classical Liberal Arts Academy website, let me share my screen here with you. If you go to the Academy website and up here at the top of the page, go to Resources and then to Library, and click on that Library link, it will bring you to this page that I'm looking at, and you'll see lots of links. Um, what I'd like you to look at are the links under reasoning and rhetoric here because these are the new texts that we've put together. I've typed up most of them, um, and, and I've been working on these texts for years, just continually preparing new copies. But I had some help recently from a friend who put the, the rhetoric together for us, so everything is now ready. But you'll see starting with Porphyry's introduction, which we'll always study first as we get started with Aristotle's reasoning. Porphyry's introduction, if you open that up, you'll see a a clean, fresh text for us to work on in English translation. So that's <clears throat> Porphyry's introduction available. Um, you'll see Aristotle's categories here with a nice, clean text available now online for us to work through. So that's going to be great. And as I just keep going through, you'll see On Interpretation has a, a full text here, all available online, um, all freshly typed and cleaned up for our study. You'll see down here, prior analytics, as great a work as it is, all now uh, retyped and available online for us to work through. 
You know, you want to know an interesting thing about Aristotle's prior analytics, which is probably the most important philosophical work ever, as it established the doctrine of the syllogism. If you look at the if you look at the books, it's real. It's interesting. There's two books, just like in uh, the Catholic Bible, there are two books: the Old Testament and the New Testament. But if you look at the number of the books, it's actually exactly the same as the Bible. Very strange coincidence, but you'll see there's 46 books, uh, 46 chapters in the first book, just as there are 46 books in the Old Testament. And there are 27 chapters in the second book, just as there are 27 books in the New Testament. So I don't know if that's a sign, um, but very strange providence, isn't it? Very strange coincidence, we can say, that the prior analytics has exactly the same breakdown in number of parts as sacred scripture does. Interesting to think about. Anyway, the prior analytics all retyped and fresh and ready for us to study. Um, posterior analytics, likewise, uh, all freshly published, all available now in a clean, nice text. Um, we've also got the topics, as great a work as that is. The topics are all published now for us. You can see eight books of the topics here. The whole entire work of Aristotle's topics are published on one web page, which is pretty cool for nerds like me. So that's all available, the topics. And then lastly, the Sophistical Elenchi, the last book of the Organon, all fully typed out and published for us to work through. As for the rhetoric, as I said, <clears throat> freshly prepared, all available for us to study. So the important thing is that we've got the entire set of works that, that need to be studied. Um, all the works of Aristotle's Organon, all of his reasoning works, and the introduction by uh, Porphyry, as well as Aristotle's rhetoric, they're all uh, typed into fresh new editions for us so we can um, enjoy access to the text and make make good use of them. You'll notice on the website, one thing I want to say, if you go on the Academy website, you'll notice that it's, it's not possible to copy things. So if you try to copy or right click, you'll get this, this notification, I think it comes up on here, that says, yeah, sorry, the content can't be copied. So there's a copy protection on this, so, uh, so no one steals the text that, that, that belongs to us as we've typed it all up. But what I'll do is um, I'll provide copies to students who are enrolled so they can have access to text where they can actually copy them. So when we're answering questions, writing essays, things like that, um, anytime we need to access uh, these texts, uh, we can grab, grab text, grab quotes and things like that and, and use it in our writing. So it's publicly protected, but um, it will be accessible to those enrolled in studies. But we've got the, the entire Organon ready for our study and the rhetoric. And um, this week, today's Tuesday, this week I'm going to get started and go through the whole thing fresh from the beginning and uh, prepare lessons for uh, my students in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And, you know, my goal in the Academy is to, is to bring this content, this classical philosophical content down into middle and high school years of study. I want students to be introduced to this while they're young because I want them to, you know, that you may say, well, they can't master, of course not. But what's important is for students to know what can be known, to know what's available for study when they're young to give them a taste of contemplative life, to give them a taste of philosophy, so that when they're 17, 18 years old, they, they've got that in, in their head as they're starting to make decisions about vocations and future plans and college and things. They need to know what all of the options are. And, and my mission, really, as, as an educator has been to take philosophy and theology, classical liberal arts studies, and bring them back down into the, the years of, of formal studies before kids start making adult decisions. So that's my intention for these lessons. I'm not intending for these to be 
some sort of college course or you know anything academic like that. My intention for these lessons is to go through Aristotle's philosophy and present it to school-age students, to beginners, so that they can they can see that this really isn't complicated and it's it's useful, applicable, and and worth pursuing. And what I'd like is to to get some kids hooked on these studies so that they'll say, hey, you know what? I want to devote my whole life to this. And I want to live a contemplative life. I want to study philosophy. I want to study reasoning and physics and metaphysics and ethics. Um, because kids just aren't exposed to these studies and go into adult life making decisions with very little information accessible to them with respect to what their options are as they consider vocations. So I'm going to target uh, or consider as my target audience for these lessons high school kids, teenagers, to introduce them to Aristotle's philosophy in simple language, going just line by line through the text, not summarizing things, not choosing what to leave out and what to include, but make myself as a teacher accountable to every word, every line, every chapter, every book, and walk through all the content in that way. So I'm going to get started with Porphyry's introduction this week, and then I think, you know, God willing, of course, um, I, I'm, I'm just going to chip away day by day, posting one or two videos, hopefully, and make my way through all of the, uh, the works of Aristotle's reasoning and rhetoric. It's also worth noting that the works of Aristotle's reasoning are, are really the first part of philosophy because the three branches of philosophy are rational philosophy, moral philosophy, and natural philosophy. Physics and metaphysics are both included in natural philosophy, but rational philosophy is the study of the art of reasoning. So this really is an introduction to what I would argue is the most important part of philosophy because it's the method of philosophy, of true philosophy. Um, and by introducing students to it, by making this content accessible uh, to the public, I think that I can successfully remove some of the, the arrogance and the, the, the prejudice that, that moderns have towards ancient philosophy because much of the ideas of modern science um, and ancient philosophy <clears throat> are quite prejudiced and, and really ignorant because no one studies this stuff. And yet they all have opinions of it. People will say things like, well, Aristotle was wrong. Aristotle, and these people have never even studied Aristotle. And so I'd like to address a lot of those issues and, and defend Aristotle, whom, whom I think is uh, much, much nearer to the truth than most modern, uh, modern scholars. So that's going to be uh, a big part of my mission in these lessons. So as I said, these, these lessons will be posted on YouTube, um, and, and my intentions for publishing on YouTube are, as I mentioned, it's, I'm not going to deny that, that they're, they're mercenary. You know, it's, 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 it's a public search engine for content. Um, YouTube has been very effective for us in introducing uh, the public to the classical liberal arts, to classical Catholic studies. Many of the students we have enrolled initially learned about the academy through YouTube videos, so it's it's very good for marketing. Um, also, I use the ad revenue that's generated, which is peanuts, but what I do is I, I, I collect ad money from YouTube videos, as simple as that may be, and I use it to pay for the hosting of our private videos, which the enrolled students actually use. So the benefit for the enrolled students, you know, parents don't want their kids running around on YouTube and things like that, nor would I. Um, so I, I host all of our videos privately and make them accessible directly through our, our study center for the students. So they don't have to go to YouTube and be distracted by ads or video suggestions and things like that. They can just study the lesson and, and stay focused on their study. So I use the ad revenue from the YouTube videos to pay for the private hosting fees, which allows the students to enjoy 
all of our video content with uh, with no distractions. So uh, I'm not pocketing any of that that ad revenue, which, like I said, is is nothing. I'm just using it to fund. Um, other services that benefit our students. So it's actually very helpful for me to put this stuff up on YouTube and uh, let the public make whatever use of it they want. So they'll be on YouTube, but if you really want to get into this, I, I, I'd really like for you to join us in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. There's, there's tons of studies, um, you know, there's assessments, online quizzes, not just the lesson content, but also assessments to really help you to develop and demonstrate your mastery, keep records of your progress and things like that. There are forums on the course pages that allow you to, to ask questions or, or chat with, with other students, other adult students if you're an adult. Um, so it's just a good place to, to focus these studies, classical Catholic studies, and, uh, and have some tools, uh, some exclusive tools, some subscription services and things like that that aren't available publicly that are only available to those who are enrolled in our program and have access to the study center. So it's something to consider, and it's cheap. It's 25 bucks a month. That covers everything. That in, that's going to include all these videos, includes everything I've described. So um, if that sounds good, you might just want to join us and, and also realize you're supporting the work that we're doing. So it's, it's not just a purchase that's being made. It's also a contribution and uh, an investment in the restoration and promotion of classical Catholic studies. So this week we should be able to get this started now that the texts are all ready. As I said, they're, they're available on the website. You're free to access them. Uh, they're right on our public site. So um, anytime you need to, to read anything from Aristotle's uh, logical works or his rhetoric, um, know that a clean English translation, it's the translation of Thomas Taylor, uh, which was made in the 1800s. It's available uh, freely on, on the Academy website. One other thing you'll notice, you might have already seen them, but if you look at this library, you'll notice that there are some things marked private, and uh, you know I'm continuing to work behind the scenes to restore uh, lots of important works and, and also do quite a bit of translating work. You can see that we're assembling a library of commentaries to go along with Aristotle's philosophical works, bringing uh, the commentaries of St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Albert the Great on these very books uh, into new texts. Now, the works of St. Albert the Great, I'm actually working to translate them. Um, actually, all of these works, Thomas Aquinas as well. There are English translations of the commentaries available, but many of them are public domain, so I'm not going to use them. Uh, I, I would much rather just work on my own translation as we go through the studies. But we're eventually going to have a library of, uh, of all of the philosophical works, mainly of Aristotle, of the Peripatetics, um, with commentaries by Aquinas and Albert the Great, so we have a Catholic scholastic um, interpretation and, and guide to the, to, the, to the right understanding and use of the philosophical works of Aristotle. So that'll be filling up. And if you continue to, to look through this library, you'll just see the works we study. Uh, all of the seven liberal arts are represented. Um, I should also mention that we've got a, the full text of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. The Aesop's Fables for the Kids is available. All brand new texts. Aristotle's Physics is available. Aristotle's Metaphysics is available. You can see the full text. The full text is here available of uh, physics, metaphysics, ethics. So we've got all of the core works of Aristotle's philosophy retyped and, and uh, freshly published. We're also working on the commentaries of St. Albert, who is personally my favorite, um, my favorite commentator. I, I like St. Albert even more than Thomas Aquinas because St. Albert, if you think about his historical context, he's really amazing because Aquinas had the benefit of growing up and learning from St. Albert. St. Albert, I think, is, is the wild one. He's the radical one. You know, he's the one who really cracked the code, as it were, and, and established scholastic philosophy. And, and I think he's greatly underestimated. I think as we restore 
and translate his works, I think Catholics are going to be amazed at how profound the the wisdom of St. Albert the Great was. And uh, that's a personal uh, project of mine. I'd like to promote the works of St. Albert, my favorite commentator, my favorite Dominican. So that's that. So all this, the seven liberal arts, classical philosophy, the works of Plato, uh, theological works, history and literature works, we're, we're going to build uh, a, a very great library of newly published texts online uh, that we can all access for these studies. And, uh, and once we get the text available online and begin using them for our studies, we get a chance to go through them, edit them, clean things up, make corrections and notes and so on. Uh, then we're going to make uh, printable versions available. N nothing like published for purchase. We're just going to make the, the text available in document format so uh, those studying them can, can print them and, and have printed copies of them as they desire. I personally think one of the best ways to study um, with these resources available will be to, to make up um, copies of these texts that are just kept in a three-ring binder, just just to have access to the texts. Um, it, you know, if, if pages get written on or ruined, you can just go online and find it and, and reprint those pages and replace them. Um, personally, I think that's going to be the way to go in the future with this sort of hybrid um, access to both online texts and uh, printable content. So uh, we'll make that available in printable form. Um, but that's what we've been working on, and, and now that much of that work is completed, uh, it, it's time for us to finally get into what we've been waiting for, which is to actually go through and teach all of these works with a clean, reliable text to work from that, that's actually in our possession to use. So if you're interested in studying Aristotle's reasoning and rhetoric, which I very strongly recommend, uh, for anyone who takes study seriously and wants to pursue the study of philosophy um, in, a, in, a, in a serious way, I'd like to invite you to join us and keep your eye out for these videos. You'll see them on YouTube. They'll also be published in the Study Center. And uh, if you have any questions about these things or would like advice for, for what and how to study uh, classical philosophy or scholastic uh, philosophy, please get in touch. You can write to me anytime. My email address is simply mail, M-A-I-L, at classicalliberalarts.com. And uh, I invite you to check out the website and see what's going on because it's, uh, it's a lot of cool stuff that's developing very quickly these days. So I hope that's helpful. God bless.